What's up guys? Drehas here today, ready to dive into settlement building. Let's get to it. So today I've chosen to build at the Starlight Drive-In. It's currently one of my favorite settlements and can be accessed early in the game. Now, each settler here will need one food and one water to be content. However, these resources can come in from other settlements as long as they are connected by supply lines. Looking at our own food and water supply, it's kind of clear that we're going to need some help. We have no food, no water, and a happiness of two. All right, food first. So we've got some dirt here at the drive-in, and we're going to utilize it. I'm planting mute fruit because it is one of the best food producers at one food per plant. Now we just need settlers to harvest it. Each settler can maintain a total of six food at a time, so they could maintain six mute fruit trees. Melon, on the other hand, only produces 0.5 food per plant, which means a settler could maintain 12 melon plants at a time. All right, so we've got the food sorted out. Now let's go check out what we could do with the water. Oh, hmm, that is a problem. So this is where supply lines come into the picture. Supply lines will allow you to send excess resources from one settlement to other settlements that have a shortage. We know our friends at Sanctuary Hills have great access to water, so we're going to start funneling that water to the drive-in. So first, head to Sanctuary Hills to make sure they will have enough water to supply both themselves and the settlement with the shortage. I've built an absurd amount of water purifiers because there's really no drawback of doing so. Each one of these provides a whopping 40 units of water. Not only will they supply the water necessary for settlements to thrive, but they'll deposit excess purified water into your workstation inventory, which you'll be able to sell for mad caps to become the richest man in the commonwealth. I'll admit, it was pretty fun to roleplay a billionaire water mogul. So now it's time to create the supply line. I'm going to be sending a settler from the drive into Sanctuary Hills. Just go into your workshop mode, put your cursor on the settler you want to create the supply line with, hit Q if you're on the PC, and select Sanctuary Hills. Congratulations! Woo! Your settlements are now linked. Your settler is now a provisioner, and you will be able to find them traveling between the two points. To double check that you just have the supply line set up, open your map, hit C, if you're on PC, and your supply line should show up. Now let's look at our resources. Sorry about the potato quality, guys. I am working on it. So our food shows 19 from the mute fruit that we planted, but our water shows zero, zilch. And this is right because the water is coming from a different settlement. And as long as both resources are displayed in green and not red, we're good. Supply lines are important because they make all settlements in the network share workshop resources, aka junk, as well as mods and food ingredients. To get them though, you have to invest in the local leader perk, but that's ultimately your call. Note that you only have to have a valid path between any two settlements to have the supplies coming through. You don't have to build a totally interconnected network, just a chain. Alternatively, you can build a star network which consists of one settlement connected to a number of other ones, or combine stars into a chain. Provisioners or supply line caravans wander the commonwealth on their route and visit yes. both towns. I don't know why she's naked. She should Just still have her clothes. Things. Of course. Yeah, she has her clothes. Can she not wear them with a mining helmet? Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I like equipping my provisioners with mining helmets. Why the hell is her flashlight at her feet? What is going on? <laughs> all right then. <laughs> all right, now on to settlers. The max number of settlers you can have at any given settlement is 10 plus your charisma. I'm currently sitting at 13 charisma, so 13 plus 10 is 23 possible settlers. I have 10 natural points in charisma with a few clothing articles to help boost it up. The lowest amount possible is 11 and the highest is 42. 
Sir Canseco made a guide on how to get up to 32 charisma temporarily to boost settlement population, and you can find his guide to the description below. To recruit more, I've set up a recruiting beacon, which has a random chance each day of recruiting a settler from the surrounding area. If you start to become full on settlers, you could just turn it off. Any settlers who are unassigned to crops, shops, or guard duty work to salvage extra junk. This looks like just kind of standing around or wandering with their weapons on. I don't really know how effective they are, but that's what they're doing. Optionally, you can raise their effectiveness by assigning them to scavenging stations. There are reports that multiple stations increase the frequency of junk salvage, though the individual rate seems to be quite low. Anyway, this means you don't have to assign everybody and should just try to assign enough farmers to cover max crops per person. You can highlight the settler to see outlines of their assigned resource in your view. To unassign a person, assign them a temp object like a salvaging station, and afterwards just delete it and the settler will become free as a bird. So to not get lost in all the assignments, the general tip is to use hats and clothes to distinguish your different settlers. I do farmer clothes for the farmers, suits for the shopkeepers, and spiked armor for the salvagers, just to make sure it's distinguishing. Mining hats nicely highlight provisioners during their travels. You can also build a bell to gather people around to manage their clothes and assignments. This is very useful for when raiders attack. Defense rating is super easy. You just need to put some working defense objects inside the settlement zone such as guard posts and turrets. Guard posts, however, hog a lot of manpower and give very few points, so I'd invest in some turrets, and traps do not appear to increase your defense rating. Use walls to bottleneck the raiders and provide line of sight obstacles against them. Actual real defense comes into play during attacks. Attacks are more likely to happen the more resources you have, they're less likely to happen the more defenses you have, and more likely to happen the closer your settlement is to dangerous zones or roads. For instance, Hangman's Alley is typically attacked more often, while remote settlements are attacked very rarely, if at all. During an attack, all settlers will take up arms and not just the guards. Give your settlers some decent weapons to fend off invaders. Take note that they only need one round of ammo corresponding to that gun that you give them. As long as they have at least one round in their inventory, their ammo is infinite. For instance, I'm giving this settler a plasma rifle with a few plasma rounds. Now once she's attacked me for a bit, it becomes quite obvious that she will not run out of ammo. Settlers will even hop inside your power armor when threatened, as long as it has a fusion core. Similar to companions, they will not drain the fusion core's energy while inside the power armor. To keep them out of your suit, simply remove the fusion core. So on a random note, there is a random encounter with a man named Gene that can sell you a dog. I would suggest buying it, because the dog is pretty cool, and it gives your settlement plus 5 defense. Word is, it's also repeatable. Alright, now let's take a look at electricity. I'm going to connect this generator to a power conduit, which is capable of providing power to any unit in a certain radius. Powered objects can require just some power, which appears as a single lightning bolt, or units of power which looks like a lightning bolt with a number next to it. This light bulb just has a single lightning bolt, which means it will always be powered if an active power conduit is nearby. You can power any number of single lightning bolt items with one generator. Most light sources are wireless and act like this. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this light bulb in front of me is outside the power radius. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of the radius of conduits and helps you plan your base accordingly. Now let's look at some lights that actually take units of electricity to power. As you can see, these construction lights have the number 1 next to the lightning bolt. This means they eat one unit of electricity from the generator that powers them. Now this particular generator provides three units of electricity, so we will only be able to power three construction lights. 
Once we connect power to the fourth construction light, the power shuts off on the first light we connected, because the fourth light is now taking its power. Real quick on shops. Local shops are worth it if you invest in local leader and the caps Let's collector trade. perks. This allows Emporium level shops to have a 700 plus cap allowance, carry junk and clothing, as well as weapons and armor. Please note that the shops work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you assign a shopkeeper Let's at night or in the morning, sure you may think he's glitched with no shop inventory or no offer to buy. So just wait for business hours. There are also unique Emporium traders in the world that can be recruited manually. These traders provide access to rare and sweet unique items. This list can be found in the Fallout manual. Finally, we have happiness. A happiness score of 80 or better means your settlers have perfect happiness, and anything above 80 is just a bonus. Happiness depends on three major factors. First, your food and water supply must equal the number of settlers you have in the settlement. The food and water can be supplied by other settlements as I showed before. Second, your defense rating must be more than the food and water numbers combined. I have 23 food grown here and 23 water provided externally. This equals 46 total resources, which is less than our defense of 50, meaning our happiness will go up. Third, you want to have as many beds as you have settlers. After securing these three factors, you can still boost your settlers' happiness up even more with shops and also by decorating the place with rugs, wall decorations, jukeboxes, and radios, and other amenities. Sometimes it will show your happiness as going down. This happens sometimes when your happiness peaks and is nothing to worry about as long as the numbers stay the same. My happiness is firmly staying at 82, so my settlers are perfectly happy. Alright guys, that about sums up what I set out to do in this video. I have a lot of work to do to make this settlement more than a few flimsy structures. Maybe I'll upload a video once it's actually completed. This video serves as a direct video extension of iBrain's rudimentary settlement guide with which this video would not exist otherwise. Thank you so much for allowing me to turn your guide into a video. It was so good that it needed to be done. You can find a link to iBrain's guide in the description below. Thank you everyone for checking this out and happy building.